thousand fans before. So it's not it's not like it would be new. Yeah, I, I just don't know, like, how they're going to do it, um, you know, when it comes to season ticket holders or, um, you know, for parents or recruits. So and I've gotten a lot of questions about that, um, you know, just today. Uh, I, I, and I don't because I don't unless I am there for the media, I don't I don't think I'll be attending any games this year. Just yeah. because, you know, I'm not a season ticket holder. I'm not a huge – I mean, I'm 25, so I'm not, you know, contributing or um, donating thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars to the program each year. But I, I, j- I don't know how they're going to do it. I don't know how they're going to pick, you know, which 13,000 people are attending. So I, yeah. I don't know. I, I just don't know, and it's it's kind of crazy. I know Louisville announced today that they will be allowing um, – 30% capacity at their games. And of course we played there week two, some interesting notes over the weekend. I saw that FSU will be allowing tailgating. If you saw that. Cool. Well, good for them. Yeah. Good. They, they got their, they, they have some problems right now. <laughs> well, like, I know you, so I saw you tweeted about something right before we went live. Uh, so I mean, is I, that something you want to share on air, or or do we talk after? I don't know, like the whole story. It's just been um, I, I've just seen it all across social media today. Um, but apparently, one of their I'm pulling it up right now. Um, so their former running back Kalon Leborn, he got kicked off the team. Um, he, he's just taken a shot at Coach Norvell and said. So this is from his Instagram page. He said he lied on my name, and I guess he's talking about Coach Norvell. He said he lied on my name saying it was a team violation, quote-unquote, when in reality it wasn't. It was just for him to know and no strikes or anything to be accounted for. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a football season for FSU because I wasn't the only one who violated, quote-unquote, team rules. If that's the case, this is wrong, and I'm really within my boundaries as a student athlete to be able to be a part of the FSU football program. Something fishy going, and I'm not stopping till I'm heard. Jeez. You know, I have to say, going into this whole thing, you you can probably find this tweet. Um, so if you guys bring it up, like, I'm, I'm going to acknowledge that I was wrong. <laughs> but, uh... I was a big Memphis fan last year. Uh, Memphis is kind of one of my adopted teams because I love their uniforms, uh, you know, I, and they always seem to be on TV when I'm watching and, and you know, at 1 p.m. here in Utah on Saturdays. Like, Memphis is always on, so I'm always watching. And I love their uniforms, fast-paced offense, whatever. Um, I, I said, like, man, I kind of wish we were getting Mike Norvell. Um, but holy crap, I am so wrong. You know, because this has been an unmitigated disaster. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Just at all levels. And, and, you know, like, I talked about this uh, a few weeks ago, maybe months ago, on the sports-centric pod with our guy, Wes Cozo. Um, You know, whether, like, it, it seems like there's some serious misunderstandings and differences, you know? Like, who knows? Who Who's to say, you know, what... Uh, Norvell is thinking, you know, whether he actually is trying to undermine these kids or, you know, if there's just some some misunderstandings from a cultural perspective or, or what's going on, but clearly it's not working and it doesn't, like, intentions don't really matter if it's not working. Yeah. You know, perception like, is reality for these kids. Exactly. Exactly. And I mean, this is a program that has just had so many problems the last few years, um, you know, with, you know, with its players and coaches, things like that. And so obviously as a Miami fan, um, you know, we have our preconceived notions about Florida State or, you know, we, we just don't like them. But I think on another on another hand, you don't want I mean, I've talked about this on social media. I don't want Florida State to be that program that is just that falls off the face of the earth because I think it is great for college football. I think it's great for our recruiting, yeah. everything like that. When Miami and Florida state are at the top of their game and obviously Miami is trending in the right direction, at least in this off season, but yeah. Florida state, I mean, cause I mean, you go back a few months ago when Marvin Wilson called out Mike Norvell for line and things like that. It's just, um, 
it, it it's they're off to a, a rough start there in Tallahassee. I agree. I I like Florida State to be competitive just because of the rivalry. The Gators, on the other hand, I <laughs> the Gators are a team that I actively cheer for to be horrible. So I I wish the Seminoles and the Gators were, you know, uh, I wish they could flip spots right now. Yeah. Um, I I do not feel bad at all when Florida wins four games. I could not care less. Yeah. I actually I, hope they just cancel their program. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, so uh, now that you bring it up, um, so <laughs> I don't know if you saw, like, I think it was last, yeah, it was last week where this idiot Florida fan was just going after me. I don't know what, like, these these peasants just get into my mentions all day. And for some reason, Florida puts on like the act that they are some national champion powerhouse that's contending for titles every single season. I like one, they haven't, it's been 11 years or it'll be 12 years this year since they won a conference championship and 12 years since they won a national championship. So I don't like, I don't know what they, I mean, they still think that, that it's still 08 and Tebow is running around like, Two years to three years ago, they were four and seven. Like, what? Yeah. Who is Florida? They're not doing anything. They well, really, if it wasn't for Bubba Baxa missing a field goal and Jeff Thomas dropping a touchdown, they lose to a horrible Miami team last year. Like, I don't know who the hell they think they are. Yeah. Sorry. Well, I just, I mean, <laughs> no, you're, you're totally right, though, because like they accuse us of living in the past, but the last time they won their conference championship, it was close. Like, that was closer in time to our last national championship than it is to modern day. Like that's, that's how far away the last time they did anything was, was that, you know what I mean? It, it's closer in time to 2001 than it is the 2020. So, I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't know where they're coming from. They're just I don't even like, I mean, it's like, like in, in the in water the, up there, man. That, and they say that, Oh, the FCC means more. I'm like, you know what? It means more if you're Alabama or if you're LSU or even Georgia. But yeah, if even you're Auburn. Not, yeah. If, if you're not beating those teams, what is the SEC doing for you? Like that's saying the ACC means more because Clemson is is who they are. Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah, it definitely makes sense. I mean, it, it's kind of funny. I think the ACC struggles to have as much depth as the SEC, but, I mean, if you look at past success, it's really been the the second-best conference by quite a good margin in the last 20 years. It yeah. really has been. I, Yeah, they just – they they upset me, Pet. Um, okay, so one – a few more things. I, I asked some some people if they wanted to ask some questions – um just uh just a mailbag one so this is from gino our guy gino love you buddy gino he said with the extra year of eligibility that the players wait hold on with the extra year of eligibility that the players will earn after this year possibly deter from any current commit we have if that player returns due to it clogging up the depth chart for someone who was hoping for early playing time hmm Mm. My knee-jerk reaction is no. Maybe Thad Franklin. Um, yeah. I, I think he would be my most likely candidate. But, I mean, if you think about it, our other biggest names, um, I mean, Bubba Bolt could be gone anyways because he could be NFL bound. Um, Gervin Hall, we'll see. Um, but I don't – that shouldn't scare James Williams. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely not. For our defensive tackles, for Leonard Taylor and Savion Collins, I don't think they have anything to be afraid of, man. I think Leonard Taylor, I mean, you could make the argument that he'd be a rotation guy if not a starter on this team right now. Mm Because our our tackles, I mean, we're solid, but we're not great at tackles. Well, and that's what I'm saying. So, um, and and I kind of have the same answer to your question. Uh, to your answer to Gino's question, but going to the switching gears to the Leonard Taylor thing, someone asked me like two weeks ago when I was doing a mailbag, um, who is one 2021 player that you think could start right away? And I said Leonard Taylor. And I'm not, this isn't me projecting that yeah. or 
predicting that he is going to start. I think that of all the star or all the players and looking at our positions, things like that, I think Leonard Taylor could start because we'll have Nesta, and I think Nesta is going to have a big year this year. Um, but besides that, it, they're good. Like John Ford's a solid player. Who knows if if he will return? I could see him coming back for another year. Yeah. Um, it like I think Leonard Taylor's skill set will 100% put him in a situation where he could definitely getting solid playing time. And yes. who knows if he could start? I think he – like that's the kind of player and recruit he is. I mean we heard Coach Manasco on the show a few weeks ago. The way that he was talking about Leonard Taylor is – I mean how could you not – maybe even consider or you know just think about him coming in as a true freshman and starting yeah no, i 100 percent agree with you man okay i'm seeing if there's a there was another question um do you see Keyshawn? and this is from fredo danitana um, um he asked do you see Keyshawn smith getting more playing time than mark pope uh <laughs> Yeah, I, I I saw this question and immediately thought of you. Well, I I don't I don't want it to sound like it's turning into a shtick, you know, where I'm like a Skip Bayless thing, where like this is my thing is that I don't like Mark Pope, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but here I will answer the question with a question: Have we heard Mark Pope's name at all yet? No. <laughs> Have we heard Keyshawn Smith's name? Have we seen a highlight video that was published of him? Yes. So that is all I will say. Like, I I think where there's smoke, there's fire. And I will stand by the fact that Mark Pope is supremely talented physically. Did you know he uh, was a five star? <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Are you serious? I'm so uh, dude, whenever. Whenever his name gets brought up, I, I have to ask that. I feel like yeah. it's a running joke. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't I don't want this to sound like it's a shtick because it's not a shtick. It's just you know everyone keeps wondering about Mark Pope, and I don't think anything's changed. I mean, you know, yeah. we're we're hearing Keyshawn Smith's name a lot, and we're not hearing Mark Pope's. So. I will I, say that there was one highlight last night, and I think it was Pope who caught a pass from D.R. King. But other than that, like, I'm not going to say that Keyshawn Smith is going to get more playing time than yeah. Mark Pope, um, especially early on. Yeah. I think that, you know, the, the main receiver are going to be Pope, Wiggins, Harley, Peyton. But Smith, I mean, we've been saying for a while now that he and Restrepo could get significant playing time as true freshmen. And so – you know, as the season progresses, who's to say that Mark Pope won't, you know, find his groove? But who's to say yeah. he doesn't? And Keyshawn Smith goes off. Like, Here's a hot know, take for you. This goes back to what we were talking about. Like, just because, yeah. you know, you're the older player doesn't mean that, like, the best player is going to play. So Yeah. I do have a hot take for you, though, in that regard. Love it. Rest I love it. Give Restrepo me. will start. He Like, the UAB game, Restrepo will go into that game ahead of Mark Pope on the depth chart. Oh. <laughs> I, I, why not? I mean, the Strepos are a leading receiver from two scrimmages. Why would, yeah. I mean, why would he not? I, I think, you know, the way that I project our receivers is that we'll probably run uh, Peyton and Wiggins on the outside and Harley at slot. I think that that's what I would guess our starters will be. Um, but so say, you know, say we decide that one of Wiggins or Peyton is a little behind schedule, then I think we move Harley to the outside and we put Restrepo in slot to start. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not going to, to, uh, to disagree with you because what is like, what do I have to say? Um, if if Restrepo is playing well and, and Pope isn't playing as well, here's the thing: both guys are Pope is going to get playing time, um, no matter what. Yeah. But the true freshmen, because they're going to get playing time too, just because like we've talked about, you know, Likens and Lashley they like to do five to six wide receivers, you know, uh -huh. rotating. 
if one if a true freshman is is making plays that you know the highly touted junior isn't, I want to see the guy that's making.